brush my teeth this morning. Okay, all of your lip gloss is a little wonky. Okay, your, and all of your individual lashes are coming off. <laughs> I was Wait, I was trying to help you Sorry. and you wanted to put me down. Should I go get the mascara? Be honest. Should I go to the car no. and get mascara? Actually, no. Did you put it on after the last No, that's why. They look full. Do you want to look you look beautiful. Look. How beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful that you thought the man was taking a photo of you and he was taking a photo of the rainbow. <laughs> Jesse, you're not gonna believe this. <laughs> no, let me tell the story. This guy pulls over, he's taking uh, photos, and she goes, Yes. And the guy goes, There's a rainbow. <laughs> I look at her and I go, <laughs> Narcissist. I, I, yeah, I, I can't believe I go, I should be so ashamed of myself. Uh, I've had a lot of embarrassing moments in my life, and that's definitely up there. If you think you want it, I. No, I trust you. <clears throat> I can't do this today. I really can't. Right. I know, me neither. We're keeping what just happened before we came into the studio How in. How could I? How could I do that? <laughs> okay, let's pray. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. <clears throat> Stop. Okay, no. <laughs> let's pray. We need to pray. It's okay. Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we need you. Holy Spirit, we ask that you come into this space. We ask that you send an army of angels right now to minister to us, to provide the wisdom and the knowledge that we need to do this right, Jesus. We need your spirit. We need your presence. We can't do this without you, God. We ask that you take your rightful place on the throne as Lord of our lives and Lord of this podcast. Girls Gone Bible belongs to you. May we decrease while you increase. May we become nothing as you become everything. May not one word that comes out of our mouths not be filtered through the mind of Christ. God, I ask that every word that we say pierces the soul of anybody listening and transforms them and brings them closer to you and reveals. I ask, God, that you reveal yourself to everybody that watches. I ask that they encounter you in a fresh way, a new way. And I ask that you have your way. Holy Spirit, move in this space. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hi, GGV gang. Hey, fam. You guys saw us last week, but we didn't see you last week, it feels like, because we didn't film last week. Doesn't it feel like we didn't see him for a week? Yeah, I miss you. I miss <laughs> you guys so much. I'm not even kidding. Even though we released something, it just doesn't feel the same when we don't get this time with you every week. It's true. So <clears> if <throat> you guys are new here, this is Girls Gone Bible. My name is Angela. My name is Ari. And this is a faith-based podcast where we talk about Jesus and spiritual warfare and spirituality. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we have a lot of fun here. We are just very real and open about the trials and tribulations of life and things that we go through and how Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Yeah. What's up? What's up? So we just got back from a two-week vacation together. Well... I w we had work and vacation yeah. back to Boston to meet my family for Thanksgiving. First, let's hang on. Let's go back to Vancouver. What do we do in Vancouver? Okay, so I know. Why did I just skip? That's over okay. Vancouver? We had a good time. Okay. So we went to Vancouver. It was when I tell you it was life changing, life changing. First of all, it's one thing to talk to you guys over, you know, Instagram and YouTube. It's, it's incredible. But to actually to have met you guys in person was it made everything feel so real for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. I was I was you guys should have seen me. We got to get into this. So we did a conference called um, Relationship by Design, God's Plan for Your Love Life. And it was a three day conference with the CLM Church um, up in Vancouver and it was three days all about relationships, Jesus, scripture. Like it was it was the mm. best time of my whole life. I love conferences. No, literally. I really encourage you if you have any conferences around your area, church conferences to go because they are truly life changing. We like, literally left like we will never be the same in the best way. It was a lot of fun and meeting. Oh, OK. So this is what we we're going to say. So meeting 
so much of GGV gang showed up and showed out at this conference. I'm actually sick about it. Like, I cannot believe how many people came from our audience. I was surprised, weren't you? <laughs> we, I, you should have seen me. I, I, I can't. Like, I was just... It was it was an outer body experience with you guys. I was crying. I was like hugging everyone. We were praising the Lord, worshiping, praying with people. It was life changing. It was the it was the best time of my life. I really, I, I like Ari said. Like when we're on Instagram, we don't have a team. So the likes, the comments, the messages, that's all us. That's one of us doing that. So we are talking to you guys whenever you get a message mm -hmm. from us. But then to meet you guys in person and to see kind of what we've done with Girls Gone Bible manifested and, and seeing it like in person like that and hearing your guys' stories about how Girls Gone Bible has brought you to Jesus, how it's transformed your life, about how like you just decided to get baptized. And get, it's just I – it really made it real for us because I think this whole time, the past six months, it's only been six months, which is just insane. Yeah, to see you guys face to face was incredible. And that's why I'm just so excited. We have a lot of things in the works coming up and I can't yeah. wait to meet more of you guys and connect with you guys and hug you guys. Oh, I there live were so for hugs. this and anything that I was feeling stressed out about before that trip, after it made it so real and I was like, how can I for a second mm -hmm not be grateful. We just love you so much. We love you so much. And the community that we've created here is real. Like it really is real family. We love you guys. You guys love us and you guys love each other. Like I, I we're watching so many people become friends with yeah. them. You know what I love too? seeing all the guy, the men that came that I, was, uh, that was on another level of, I, I, I was, couldn't believe it. I was just like, what are you guys doing here? I didn't know you watched. This is amazing. It was incredible. Yeah. The men, yeah. you know, it was incredible, but yeah, it, it just really feels like you guys are fa a family. It's, yeah. it's incredible. You are a family. You really are. <clears throat> and then after that, we went to Boston. Yeah. And... Angela <laughs> fell in love with I, Boston. I've been to Boston before. It wasn't my first time, but this time was, I mean, it was just much different. And I We were on a high, like a natural, euphoric, supernatural, Holy Spirit high. Truly. I, here's the thing. In L.A., you can't get me to leave the house no. past... Eight o'clock. No, nope, you we're, really we're, can't. We're asleep. Yeah, no, we're asleep. We're in bed. We're drinking tea on the couch. Like I'm not interested. I'm not interested in going out. I'm not interested, and in, I'm certainly not interested. In, and it's not just because I'm sober. It's because like I don't like it. Like I like being around people. I like parties. If the parties aren't weird, I actually you know? started to think that something was wrong with me here. Like yeah. I was, I was like looking at you one night. I think it was like six p.m. and we were like dead on the couch <laughs> drinking tea, and I'm like. Have I hit that age? Like, I know. what's happening? Because we're fun. We're fun. No, we are fun. Dude, you know what I was thinking the what? other day? You and... Okay. N what? Okay. I think one of the... Okay. <laughs> we are, like... One thing that you can say about you and I is if somebody is in our presence, they're going to have fun. Oh. What, what is it? What, we just... Listen, if it's one thing about me and you, we are going to have a good time. We are going to have you a good time. You put us anywhere with anyone, we will show you a good time. Honestly, truly. You can put us in a room with four white walls with nothing else in it, and we will have the time it's of our lives. It's the Holy Spirit. It is. We, it, it's we just, joy. Yeah, we just have that. We have joy. Yeah. But yeah, no, we had so much fun. We, we couldn't even stay in the house for a minute. We just wanted to be out. We, it was crazy. I, I, like I said, you can't get us to leave the house. And I was every single night. So we'd be out all day doing what. And listen, this is like good, wholesome fun. Like we're going having tea and like well, whatever. I had a glass of wine. Ari had a glass of wine <laughs> to celebrate my four years of sobriety. <laughs> um, but and then every night Ari would be like, we were exhausted. We were exhausted. We're running on no, three we hours of sleep every night. Hours. Ari would be like, you don't want to go out tonight, right? And I'd be like. Oh, we're going out. I have never seen her like this in my life. I, was, I couldn't believe it. I have never seen such joy in your eyes. I was having the time of my life. I loved it. I loved being out. I loved... This is the thing about, about the East Coast, especially, specifically the Northeast. The people are just cool. They're yeah. different. They're not these, like, social... Not to put anyone down, but, like, there's no TikTokers. No, there's no influencers. It doesn't influencers. matter what you drive, what you're wearing. You just go and you have a good time. I felt like, you know what movie I felt like I was in? The I, town. I, no, no. No. 
The, no, not the dog. You know, no, the oh, the Christmas movie with Kate Winslet and um, Cameron Diaz. Oh yeah, the holiday. Yeah. And I just, I don't know. It just, it was so Christmassy. It was so small. It was so cute. And even like. Just everybody, the people were so cool. The guys were cool. The guys like they are were so, so cool. like no one cares. Just so normal. Doesn't matter what you do. Nothing. No one's saying, "Oh, what do you do?" Like that's no. what I love about it. And it's that energy. It's just that family, it good did. energy. We would meet people, and within ten minutes, felt like they were family. Yeah, yeah. it was that's so how cool. It is. That's why I'm so happy that I'm from there. You know, your values and stuff are just yeah. different. But we're in the car driving with my dad and my nan in the back. My dad's two favorite song is um, Black and Yellow by, by Wiz, Wiz Khalifa. Khalifa and No New Friends by <laughs> Little <DJ> Wayne. <laughs> no, Little Wayne oh. and DJ Khaled. <laughs> and so he's like blasting this. And I'm looking at Angela and I'm like, ear you gates and eye gates. Oh, so good. oh my gosh, that video is going, making its rounds right now on the <laughs> internet of me going, you have the ear gates and you have the eye gates and you have to be careful. And, I, and it's true and I'm happy, but there are just some things that I'm like, I wish that there's, it's, there's some things that are okay to be in the full episode. <laughs> that just feel embarrassing to I have on that, Instagram. I hope that somebody clips uh, with you saying that there's witchcraft and all the candy that they pass out on Halloween. I hate you. Anyways. <laughs> okay. Anyways, so that was all fun and games, right? We had yeah. a great time. We're happy to be back. We're happy to get back to work. But we have a couple of things that we need to talk about, which is what this episode is actually going to revolve around. It's two things. First of all, December 10th, we're hosting the first Girls Gone Bible baptism at Mosaic in Hollywood. I know that not everybody lives in LA. If you are able to make it, we already have over 110 people getting baptized in one night. They're going to have to have like five pools. I don't know what they're going to do. But we are so, this is going to be huge. Even if you don't want to get baptized, you're more than welcome to come. We I'll put the RSVP in our description. Yeah. We want you guys, if you haven't gotten baptized, you're going to want to get baptized. You are. We, we got baptized. baptized when we were in Vancouver. Now even more than ever after my baptism, I'm like, okay, we need to have a lot of these baptisms because it truly is life-changing. Life-changing. Yeah. Literally life-changing. So we... Today's episode is going to be about baptisms, yeah. and it's really fitting that we have one coming up that we're hosting. We just got baptized. We'll get into all that. We'll share videos of what, what that was like for us. We took videos. We look like, you know, wet, wet rats, rats. <laughs> but it's all good, and I... We're just so happy to be here with you guys. I love you so much. You guys, today's sponsor is BetterHelp. GGB gang, you know I'm a huge advocate for BetterHelp. It played a massive role in my healing journey. Can you tell them about when you opened your phone to the BetterHelp? When I found out we were partnering with them, I was like, oh my gosh, I have a whole journal entry in my in the notes. You write down a biography. I wanted a really good Christian therapist, yeah. and they match you with that. And I had an incredible Christian therapist that got me through my journey and I just I love it and it's so easy yeah it's so easy to do you do it all th online BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. Starting therapy can be hard. The right therapist for you may not be in your area. Right. With BetterHelp, you can have your therapy sessions as a phone call, video chat, or even just through messaging if you prefer that. Whatever is the most comfortable version of therapy for you. BetterHelp can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists in their network. To get started, go to betterhelp.com slash girlsgonebible and fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you'll get matched with your therapist in most cases within 48 hours or less. If the therapist you're first matched with doesn't feel like a right fit, which can be common when starting therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost. People spend hours in the gym every week, so why not give your mind the same type of attention? Four million people have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. If you guys think that therapy would be a good fit for you, I really encourage you to try BetterHelp. You can either click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash girlsgonebible. Clicking that link helps this channel, but it also gets you 10% off of your first month with BetterHelp so you could find the perfect therapist for you. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video. So today we are reading Matthew chapter 3. I love the Gospels. Boy, do I love the Gospels. Me too. Man, I fasted yesterday. If I can encourage mm. anyone to do anything, it's to, to fast. How do you feel? It, 
I feel so good, but yesterday I felt so close to God. And if you want to hear his voice, take a day and fast. You'll hear it really loud and clearly. First, let's talk about what a baptism is. So a baptism symbolizes new life with the symbolic use of water. The Greek root, um, the Greek root of the word baptism is baptizen, I think. If I said that wrong, mind wrong. your business. Oh, you think I'm wrong? How do you know? What mind is it? your business. What, what, what is it then? Friggin. So the Greek word baptizen means to plunge, to immerse, to sink, hence to wash, to be immersed. Mm. And basically a baptism is our public declaration of our faith in Jesus. It's, an, it's a way that we identify with Jesus, with the finished work of the cross. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many things to go over, but let's just start with Matthew chapter 3. We're in New King James Version. John the Baptist prepares the way. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him, and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones, and even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry." He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor, gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chafe with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased." I love that it's so, so cool. much. It's so, uh, okay, so let's start from the beginning. So John the Baptist, a.k.a. not Baptist, the denomination of uh, Christianity, but Baptist as in he's the one who baptizes. So John prepares the way for Jesus. John was the, the baptisms that John was doing during this time are different than the baptisms that we do today after Jesus. Basically, John was baptizing people of, the, he was doing baptisms of repentance in anticipation of the Messiah's coming. Mm -hmm. And then our Messiah came. Mm -hmm. So now we do baptisms as a declaration, the fact that our Messiah actually came and that he died on the cross and he atoned for all of our sins. That's what I love about um, baptism. It, it identifies the fact that we belong to Jesus Christ and he is our Lord and Savior. And so when we do this, we go public mm -hmm. with him, right? Mm -hmm. So your past, the shame, the guilt, the power of the enemy, the defeat, the old you gets buried under the water mm. and you come up in the newness of life. Yeah. And so that's exactly how I felt when I got baptized. Mm -hmm. It was the it was an outer body experience that I can't even describe. Well, you know, you did it too, yeah. but it was just incredible. That's ex I felt new. I felt purified. It was incredible. I 
I love what you just said about how it's it's because a water baptism is symbolic of what Jesus went through of, of his death, his burial and his resurrection, because we die with him. We go underwater. Mm-hmm. Being underwater is being buried. Mm-hmm. And then we come up again, just like how Jesus came up. We come up in resurrection, Jesus resurrected. And when we are in Jesus, we also have the chance to resurrect from That's every right. death we experience. That's right. And every sin and didn't you feel like that when you came up? You just felt purified. We'll get into that, yeah. but that's how I felt. Like it was a newness. It yeah. was beautiful. When John is saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, when he says kingdom of heaven, he's basically talking about Jesus. Like God in human form is here. Kingdom, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's here mm-hmm. in the form of Jesus. And... I let's talk about repentance a little bit because I don't have we ever talked about repentance on here I I mean I think it's always good to talk about it yeah because it frees you from a lot of shame and guilt it's absolutely necessary in our walk with Jesus and it's something that I don't know about churches in other places in the world but I know a lot of churches around here that or that we've been to there's I haven't heard much about repentance and I don't really hear this conversation being had. Mm -hmm. I think repent is such a weird word for people and it's something that people kind of reject when they hear it. Um, mostly because people don't want to take responsibility for their actions a lot of the time. And I understand, I get it. Repentance is basically making a 180 from it's turning away from sin. It's turning away from what you've been doing. It's making the conscious decision to renounce a sin or a habit, or an addiction, or something that you've been doing that is against God's word, and turning away from it. Yeah, I love that you say that. It's important to understand that, because people think that they can just, oh, I'll just do this again, and then I'll repent, and then I'll do it again, but I can just repent. No, you have to make the conscious decision every day to live by the word of God. 100%. It says in Acts 2.38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So along with baptism, along with... You know, you you give your life to Jesus, you say the salvation prayer, and then you get baptized. But repentance is really, it's crucial in your walk. Um, Otherwise, what is the appeal of Jesus and the gospel if there is no transformation Mm -hmm. in your life? Mm -hmm. Why would other people look at you and say, wow, that's what life is like with God. I want to do that when nothing has changed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Change is, is hard. A lot of the time, growing pains, they're real emotionally, just like they are physically, but it's so important. And repentance is, how do you repent? Well, you have to know really what you did and you have to come forward with your whole heart and humbly before God. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of mistakes that I've made and a lot of things that I held inside my heart Mm -hmm. that I really felt so guilty and, and sorry for. And um, when I did repent, I make it a point every single day that I live right and I don't make that same mistake again. And that's why I love that you say that because it's important that people know that because I know a lot of Christians that keep do like they'll repent and they keep doing it over and over again. And that's not following God. No, it's not. You might as well not repent if you're going... Here's the thing. Once you know, mm. and then you go and do it again, it's you're 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 really going against God. Because yeah. once you know, then that's when it's so true. Yeah, we we actually talked about this recently. Oh yes, we're, we we're, did. We're talking about the grace of God, and mm. and grace is basically it's unmerited favor from God. It's mercy. It's it's Him favoring you even when you don't deserve it. Like there are times in my life where I was truly really rebelling against God, rejecting him. And Mm -hmm. he still gave me grace. He still gave me protection. He was still there for me and covered me. And that's what grace is. And there, you always have grace because that's who God is. But when you don't know, like me and Ari are going to have a whole episode one day about the sins and habitual sin and, and things that we've done that we, even as Christians, even as sitting on this podcast, we were still doing, and and God has kind of one by one taken us through different things to lay down in our lives. And for me personally, it's been kind of like an eye-opening situation. Like I'll know what God says about it, but I won't know it in the sense that it changes me and transforms. I don't have that revelation of whatever that word from God is. And when I, so when I don't have that revelation yet, 
I have grace. I have a lot of grace because mm-hmm. I'm blind to it. Mm-hmm. My eyes aren't open. I, I can't see it. I don't know yeah. it. Once I have that revelation, I still have grace, but it's not the same as when I didn't know as when I didn't know about why that sin is wrong. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's some things now that I know that I cannot do. And if I go back and do it, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the term is for it, but it's really not. I can't even imagine doing some things now that I know. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah. And so while yes, if you do fall, you, you repent, you, you get back up, you repent and like you just, you keep coming back to Jesus. But at the same time, you don't just repent because that's what you're supposed to do. You do it because you're actively making the decision to turn away from this thing. This is a very heavy way to start this episode, yeah, but it's no, important. We'll have a whole episode on this, yeah. I think, because it's important people understand because just like us, we literally were blind to it. Yeah. You know, a lot of things, a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so we'll have a whole episode on that. But that was a great point that you just made. Thank you, sister. I appreciate that. Um, I want to go to. Um, I want to go to Matthew three, verse seven. It's talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the Sadducees were two prominent groups in Judaism during the time of Jesus. Both groups claimed to be true followers of Judaism, but their beliefs were considerably different. Basically, both of them were very much by the law, by the book, by the rules. There was no relationship with God during this time. And that's why I'm so grateful that we have Jesus, because otherwise we would not have this intimate relationship with him. If our Messiah never came, we would be stuck in the law. Yeah. And it would not feel good. Um, And then I just I want to talk about this. I love this. What John the Baptist says so much. He goes first. He says, therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And something that Ari and I do a lot is we're very honest with ourselves. This goes back to repentance a little bit, but we're really honest with ourselves about which areas in our lives are not producing we're not producing good fruit in what is it that still needs to be cut off and thrown into the fire. And it's just really important that you're honest with yourselves about these things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you're making a lot of mistakes in one area, Mm -hmm. that's something to look at. Yeah. And it's hard. It's hard to, to cut off some things that feel good or, you know, let's go to, um, Matthew chapter three. I think it's verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water into repentance, but he, Jesus, who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. And I love when he says that so much because we are literally not worthy to carry his sandals and he came to die for us. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem fair. It's not fair, but we're so grateful. And it says that Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And so basically when we talk about this today, there's three baptisms. There's a water baptism. There's a baptism of the Holy Spirit, which we'll get into. Mm-hmm. And then there's also a baptism of fire. And I think I've been having the baptism of fire all year. So a baptism of fire is kind of, it's, it's, it's God's way of sometimes he brings you through the fire and that's what it is. He's, he's burning things off of us. He's burning things out of us. And it's all a process for refinement and purification and sometimes he really turns the heat up high because that's the only way Mm -hmm. and you might think oh my gosh he's so mean for doing that but it's literally because he loves us so much and he refuses to let us stay the same as we've been he wants to see us get better and better and become the people that he intended us to be Mm -hmm. and I know for me I just feel like I've been walking through the fire all all year and I truly this has been like You've been in the same situation as me. This has been the best year of our lives. And on the same coin, the hardest year of our lives. Like we have been in a constant pruning cycle over. We think we're out of it. And then, oh, here we go again. And it's just, it's beautiful. And I'm so grateful. And I wouldn't have it any other way. But it's, it's, it's while it's so worth it in the life we want to live, it's hard. It is hard. Um, I didn't really understand what they meant when they said being a Christian is probably one of the hardest thing you'll ever do, but it has been the most rewarding. And man, have I been in the baptism of fire too, Yeah, being pruned and shed of just a lot, but it's been incredible. It's incredible. And and we talk about it all the time, how 
sometimes because we've said it before. Sometimes we're like, oh, but we look at these people and, and they're doing this and that and that and, and they're fine and whatever. And then we look at each other and we're like, we're called to a different standard. It's true. And it's we should be honored. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and we are. I am. But and, and you will reap the award. You will reap the rewards if you do, if you live like if you walk by God's word. Absolutely. You will. You will. Yeah. And it's. We will get into a whole sin. We, I think we're dying to talk about sin. I know. I we think have to it's, do a whole episode Yeah, I think about it's it. something that's been on our mind a lot because we've just had... It's really funny how God's been giving us so, so many things recently to that he's he's taking... It's You know what's funny about the podcast wow. is we are living everything out in real time. Well, I, 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 I wanted to... I was going to say that today because I'm like, you guys are literally... Like, we are on this walk with you. You're watching us grow. Like, we're watching you grow. You're watching us grow. We're growing together. Like, we are not above you guys. We are literally here with you learning. And, you know, yeah. it's, it's that's I think that's what makes the podcast so beautiful and so so real is because yeah. we're all together in this. Yeah. People can relate. Exactly. And God, he knows exactly what he's mm-hmm. doing by taking us through it in real time. So people see the process and it's like you they trust us in it because they know that it's real like it's it's Mm -hmm. we're not we're not 10 years down the line being like oh this is kind of what happened like no this is what's happening right now but anyways just to finish this off let's go to um john 3 16 when he says the heavens were opened to him and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and alighting upon him so if you guys don't know this, so we're obsessed with, we, like the GGB symbol is the dove and we the dove the symbolizes dove. the Holy Spirit. And this is where it comes from. He saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon Jesus. So this is kind of the first time it shows the true, the scripture will show the true divinity of who Jesus is, um, about how he is the son of God and he is the Messiah. Let's talk about our baptism. First, yeah. before we talk about our baptism, Let's get into, touch on something that is really personal to a lot of people. And um, Mm -hmm. so we have a lot of Catholic brothers and sisters that watch us, and we love you guys so much. And and as most of you know, Ari and I grew up Catholic. We were baptized as babies. And when we actually started this podcast, we had made a comment about wanting to get baptized in the Jordan River, but we can't because we're Catholic and, you know— the Catholic Catholicism says that you confess to only one baptism, and that's usually the baptism. A lot of people get baptized as babies, as Ari and I both did. And we just want you guys to know that, like, we love you so much, and and there's so much controversy between Catholics and Christians. And I just want you to know that we are we don't get baptized by John the Catholic or John the Christian or John the like. We get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are one. It doesn't matter what denomination we are. We are one body. We are the Church. We are one in Christ. And so, just we are on this journey with. We are on this journey with God, just like everybody else is what I'm trying to say. And we're kind of realizing things in real time, getting revelation. And the truth is we changed our mind recently and decided that we would, we wanted to get baptized. And, you know, Mm -hmm. how was that decision for you? Because you, you were actually the first one who we were in Vancouver and, and we were just sitting at dinner and you were the one who was like, I want to get baptized this weekend. Yeah. uh, God had been planting the seed and putting it on my heart for for a while and I kept kind of rejecting the thought, rejecting the thought. I don't know why I kept rejecting the thought, but I did. And I, 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 also, I also wanted it to be by, I wanted to get baptized by the right person. Yeah. I didn't want to just get baptized by anyone. Mm-hmm. And so I felt so safe with Dr. Fassel yeah. and I just knew at dinner and I don't even know what made me say it, but I just, I had it so God had really put it on my heart Yeah. to, to, um, to get baptized before we did that three day sem- uh, three day conference, yeah. um, and it was the best decision I could have made. It really was. Was it for you? It was. I just want to say something about you really quick. That's been on my heart a lot recently. People are very judgmental on not towards you, but in general about who God will use for specific things. One thing about Ari that people need to understand is while she's maybe only been saved a little over a year, I have never seen somebody who is more responsive 
to God's call than you. You are mm-hmm. so sensitive to God's voice. When he speaks, you listen. Mm-hmm. Your obedience is incredible. Thank and you. like you have led me in so many ways of being like, I heard God want us to do this, so let's do this. And it'll open my eyes. And and sometimes I can be a little bit stuck in my ways about things. Mm-hmm. And you will just, you have this again, the childlike faith that you're just like, you're just sensitive, like a child is. Mm-hmm. Like you're, you're set, like children are always looking to their parents for guidance. Like you're always looking to God for guidance. And you've, you've led us in this partnership and in this podcast in so many ways. Thank you so much for saying that. I mean, I think a lot of people are scared to go. I, I was scared to come to faith. I was like, I don't know as much as, as these people are. Or I don't know the Bible. I don't, it doesn't matter. No. All that matters is this Mm. and how much you love and how much you want to learn and and obeying God and following him and learning. And even if you don't know how to do the right thing, learn about him. And that's what I did. I didn't know anything, but I knew that I wanted to learn Mm. and I knew that he's he's good Mm. and what he was doing in my life. And so I just I learn every day. I don't know. I don't know everything, but I learn and I don't act like I do know everything, but I'm doing my best. And that's all you need to do when you follow God is really do your best. You are doing a great job. (laughs) I've (laughs) never seen somebody retain so much information in such a short amount of time. Thanks, sister. Truly. (laughs) Was I, did I sound sarcastic? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, GGB gang, have fun studying the Bible with daily trivia and challenge your knowledge of scripture. Do you guys know the town name in which Jesus was born? Or do you know the name of his parents? Or do you know the names of all the disciples he had? Daily Bible trivia is a beautiful game that respects the Bible. Test and improve your knowledge of the Bible with daily Bible trivia beautiful daily Bible verse that you can share with your friends and save to your phone for inspiration. If you love improving your biblical knowledge like you know I do, you're going to love daily Bible trivia. Download daily Bible trivia today to challenge yourself. Just go to the Apple or Google store and search for daily Bible trivia. Download daily Bible trivia for free today and get ready to flex your brain muscles. Thank you, daily Bible trivia for sponsoring this video. So let's get into your baptism and my baptism. We got baptized Why don't in you matching go first, t-shirts. I, I made her go first. I was so nervous. Oh my gosh. Wait, you have to tell them after how you wanted me to hold your hand. And I, I was like, promise. I can't hold your hand. This is between you and God. Um, so basically, you know what's so funny is that we both got baptized on the same day. We're very similar. We're very, you know, prominent in each other's lives. And we're, we have a very similar walk with God. And we had completely different experiences in our baptisms. Like it we was. Uh, so, okay. So basically, I, I, I just don't know where to start. Okay. So. When we were getting ready to be baptized, we were at Dr. Fassel, who is now one of our dear friends, best guy. In, oh man, best guy in the true world, true man of God. Yeah, like we love him so much. We He's love like our dad. We're gonna have him on the podcast. That is gonna be life changing. That's gonna be in a few weeks. Yeah. But so we're sitting in his bathroom, and I am getting ready, and I'm going first. And Ari asked me to go first. I'm like, okay. And they're praying over me. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to try to walk you guys through this encounter that I had. And I, and I, it's sometimes hard to talk about the spiritualness of things because you can sound a little bit crazy, but as we all know, and, and I also, I wanted to say this too, that I don't want anybody that listens to us to ever feel discouraged if you don't have profound spiritual experiences. That doesn't mean that you're not saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus is your savior, you are saved. And just because you don't have like these incredible spiritual experiences all the time, it doesn't mean anything. Um, Some people are just more inclined to the supernatural and to spirituality, and you may have other gifts and that's totally okay. I also don't want you, just in case you go get baptized and you don't feel all these things and see all these things, I don't want you to think that it's not working because it is. All of us are on different journeys and it's okay if you don't have these experiences. But um, so I'm sitting there and they're praying, right? We're all getting ready. It's a few of us in the room. And they're praying over me and I start hearing, it's like God had started to prepare me for what was about to happen. I got extremely sensitive spiritually and emotionally. I start crying. I just, I started to get overwhelmed in a good way. I was just feeling a lot of emotions and I just felt a lot of things happening in the spiritual that I couldn't really understand yet. 
And then it felt like I was seeing with my eyes, I was hearing audibly in my ears, and I was feeling in my in my spirit that in the spiritual realm, in that moment, there was a fight for my soul. Hmm. There was a legitimate fight for my soul happening. The enemy knew what was about to happen. And he had gone my whole life stopping me from getting actually baptized. My original baptism isn't my real baptism. The one on November 17th is. That's when I decided with my own, by my own will and, and by my own um, declaration to get baptized I was sitting there and I'm seeing I'm seeing like a spiritual battle happening and I'm feeling a fight for my soul and the voices were so loud. I just felt like I was hearing screaming in my head like it was crazy what was happening. And I just kept hearing God's voice say over and over again, you are mine. You are mine. You are mine. And I'm sitting there and I'm crying and I'm like, this is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. It was so cool. She had this, so Angela, <laughs> when she has experiences with God, she has this childlike laugh. She just starts bursting out laughing. Yeah, that happened and I'm after. sitting there and I'm like, is she okay? Is she laughing? <laughs> that, what, you had so much joy. Well, well, that so that happened after. So I'm sitting and I'm and I'm experiencing this before I even get in the water. So I'm having these. It's like so loud in my head, and I'm ha- I'm ex- I'm literally watching in the spirit, like just this battle going on right now. But God's voice so loud over everything, and I felt like this is metaphorically what had been going on for the past my whole life. Is that the voices were so loud. But God's voice was always louder. But these voices were still so loud. And while I did have power through Jesus, because I was saved, regardless of the baptism, I was saved. And Jesus was my savior. And I did have power through the blood of Jesus. The voices, I I was not as empowered to trample over these voices and these demons. And then so I get in the water and all the voices are still loud. And they, they, they do the prayer and they say everything. And then they put me under and I go under. And as I'm in the water, I still hear the voices. I hear everything, but I still hear God's voice over all of that saying, you are mine. You are mine. The enemy was grieving bad. When I get up, (laughs) when I get up from that water, I'm telling you, just like out of a movie, it was silence. Every voice in my head, silent. He had silenced every voice voice. And all I heard after that was God's voice saying, you are mine once and for all. Hallelujah. And I was just like, whoa. I, and again, like I said, I had gone my whole life without the empowerment of, of the mark of baptism. Like the, like when you get baptized, it's a mark in the spirit realm that like you're identifying with Jesus. I belong to him. I am his. And so while we, yes, we had power through Jesus it's not the same as we're going to have now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's an empowerment. It's a power through the Holy Spirit that we, it's like indescribable. We have, it'll be not, you know, effortless, obviously, like we're still going to have issues, but there's going to be the, uh, we're going to have a higher level of being able to resist and avoid temptation and get out of bad situations. We won't be so susceptible to fall into these things. And so, and then I'm going to play a clip right now of, what happened? So I get baptized and I'm bawling my eyes out. And then for me, like Ari said, the whole, whenever the Holy Spirit, I feel like comes upon me or I'm having like a spiritual experience, I will start laughing like crazy. And this is me laughing. Love is a witness to your resurrection, <laughs> your death and your burial. Is That life is flowing in her today. And we thank you for that resurrection life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for the joy of the Lord, the joy of your salvation. It's good to be happy. I'm so happy. And it's just... I love it. I love that. Oh, that was the best one of my life. And and after that, I we'll talk about that after. But it's unbelievable. It was incredible. Go yeah. ahead. Um, it's so funny. I am so I am attached, at Angela, to the hip. Like I can't believe it. She. I don't even remember life before her. Me neither. And 
the first thing that I could think about when I was going into the bathtub was I was like looking back, but I was embarrassed because I didn't know she could be there with me. She totally could have. And I wish you were, but it's okay. <laughs> but I just wanted you to be the one to be there holding my hand because you guys don't understand, like through my journey with God, she was the one that saved me. Like she is my earth angel. And so I really, I just, it's okay though. It's okay. <laughs> but, um, it's okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I had a little bit of a different experience. So and it's just so cool how we can all have different experiences. It is, right? So anytime that I am sitting with God, I'm always wearing the same thing. I'm wearing a long white gown every single time. Like when you have visions. When I have visions, I'm wearing a long white dress. And so when I had my eyes closed and I went under the water, God, did you feel that when you went under the water, it seemed like you were under there for like two or three minutes. I saw so much in that second of being under the water. I, I don't remember. I don't think so. Not my experience, but that's cool. Yeah. So when I had my eyes closed and I went under the water, I had the, I was walking into this gate. I had, I, I had, I just looked blissful. Everything was so bright. I couldn't see Jesus's face, but he was right there. And I'm walking through the gate to him. And it was like, I'm going to get emotional because it was so amazing. But it was like a picture of what had happened to me. Like like the the sadness I was in and like the pain and stuff. And he was just looking at me with his arms open. And um, he took me in his arms. and um, And then I came up and it was like... Every, I, I can't explain. It was like a purity I felt, a newness that I felt. Um, and when I had opened my eyes, I, I could it, everything was really bright and beautiful, mm. and I felt new. Yeah. I felt I felt new. And I don't know. It's just like it felt like he he had his hand on like he's had his hand on me mm-hmm. this whole time through my journey but he now has his hand on me in a whole new way now we now baptize you in the name of the father son and holy spirit <laughs> <laughs> and that's why i just i encourage people to get baptized and then after I had come out of the water, Dr. Fassel and Bev started praying on me. Mm -hmm. And I think the profound moment that I had is when they said, we see you in a white dress and we see you at the altar, but God wants to keep his veil over your eyes right now because he needs you Mm -hmm. just for him. Because before he gives you to anybody else, he needs you to be his bride. Mm. And... It was just like, I couldn't believe when they said that about that they saw me in a white dress. Yeah. (laughs) I was just like, I opened my eyes and I I, I was like, are you kidding me right now? I was like, the whole time I was having visions, I was in a long white dress and I always am in that. So it was like God had given me that message Mm. that he needs me to be his bride first. Mm -hmm. And it was beautiful. And... I have been in just such bliss and there are things that, you know, this past week that could have easily made me turn my eye and and be really sad and resentful and things like that. But I have the peace of God. I Mm. have the Holy Spirit in me. I can feel it, how Mm. at peace I am more than before. I just feel new. I feel new and I'm so excited for my journey to to really live right. I, I, I... I was worried before. I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do this walk. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm a little nervous. Mm -hmm. And I just feel so ready and committed to him. And I actually, I was in prayer for about an hour today and I prayed for you guys. Um, I just, I always do them. Like I just want, because I talked to so many of you girls and I was in prayer and I just, I, I just hope that you guys do it. I just see so many breakthroughs coming through for you girls. And in guys, I see so many breakthroughs. And I just feel the hand of God is going to be on your life in a mm. whole new way. Mm-hmm. And I'm really excited for you guys. Mm. I'm really, really excited for you guys. 
that was watching you. Oh, man, if we haven't been through enough together already, it's just like that baptism. We're wearing the same shirt. They gave us these shirts. We have, wait, let's put the photo up of no, us I'm looking not, like... I'm not putting that photo up. Yes, no way. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. And I, we just like watching you go through that and it's just so funny how the baptism was it, it was so metaphorical for our lives and and that what we were experiencing while it was happening and afterwards was just so specific to our lives and what we needed you you wanted you ne- you needed to feel love from the father and that's what you felt that's what he brought you into you had a revelation of like how much he really does love you and now you don't feel the need to find that love in other places because you are fully aware of how much Jesus loves us yeah. you know what i mean he revealed that to you yeah i am like all i could say afterwards was i was like i was ready i w- i felt like a warrior like i truly i felt like a fighter i felt like me and they kept asking me how do you feel i'm like me and Jesus won. Mm-hmm. Like I feel, I felt victorious. Mm-hmm. Like I felt victorious over everything. Just like how I, I just, I felt like I almost saw my life flash before my eyes. And I saw myself in so many different parts of my life where I was struggling. And I, and while I had Jesus and I knew Jesus, I didn't, God was showing me like, if only you had, and it's okay that you didn't because now you can appreciate the empowerment that I'm going to give you from this point forward Mm -hmm. so much more. But I saw myself and I felt like I heard him saying to me, like, I just want you to know without this mark of baptism, it was more difficult for you than it would have been with it. But you really, you're a fighter, girl. Like you really, you did what you could and you did a good job to get out of these situations. And it's the same with you. We have fought so hard to get here through so much darkness and like, I know so many people are watching us who you guys are fighting through so much darkness. And if you're a part of GGB gang, Mm -hmm. you're just like us. And we will not be a victim. We will not fall prey to the schemes of the enemy. We will not go under in the storm. Like we will come out on top through Jesus. And I know that you guys are fighting too. And I know it's hard and I know Mm -hmm. it's an uphill battle, Mm -hmm. but you've got this. And I really please go get baptized if you haven't yet. Go get baptized baptized guys yeah go get baptized and it's it's like it shows how fully committed you are to jesus right. it shows your commitment i i want to um i want to read first peter three twenty one. it says and this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we talked about this a lot. Our eyes, after we got baptized, we looked pure. We could see it in ourselves. Isn't that, we looked like we, it was Jesus in our eyes. I kept saying it to you the whole time. Like, you look like you have the Holy Spirit in your eyes. Yeah. Truly. There was a purification that happened. There was, there was something that all of the... W- ways we've been in the past that's why it's truly being made new there are so many things just like you said about how there are parts of our walk with God that are scary to us it's scary to not live like the world it is there's things that we have to give up that we are we before getting baptized we didn't know how we were going to do it and we would talk we would honestly speak death over and we'd be like we can't do this how are we going to do this we can't do this how long we can't do this and I can't even bring myself to say some of the stuff that I was even thinking about before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it doesn't mean that life is just going to be blissful no. and perfect, but I'm telling you the hand of God that will be on you after you are baptized is a different kind of, it's different. It's empowerment. That's it's what it empowerment. is. It's empowerment. You truly have the Holy Spirit in an, in, on a null... No- you truly have the Holy Spirit on a whole other level after you're baptized. I'm telling you. Yeah. I feel it. I do too. I feel different. Mm-hmm. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So this is what our decision to be baptized tells our Father in heaven. Mm. That's why it's so important. Mm. It's... It's truly when you go under that water and you come up, you are a new person. Mm -hmm. You are born again. You have a, I mean, you're born again when you, you know, receive salvation, but you're made new. It's a cleansing. It's a purification. So another um, thing that we want to talk about is baptism, being baptized by the Holy Spirit. And 
we did a whole episode on the Holy Spirit. We love the Holy Spirit so much. It's the third person of the um, Holy Trinity. It's God the Father, Jesus the Son, and and their Holy Spirit. And we have we love asking for the Holy Spirit. Whenever we pray, we ask that the Holy Spirit inhabits our mind, our bodies, our spirits. We we ask that the Holy Spirit will fill the room that we're in. The Holy Spirit is, when Jesus died on the cross, he basically poured out his Holy Spirit onto the earth, and all you have to do is ask for the Holy Spirit. Um, and when we're baptized with the Holy Spirit, we basically receive the revelation and the knowledge of who Jesus is. And I just want to say that if you believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, Savior, you have the Holy Spirit. You know the Holy Spirit because it's only by the touch of the Holy Spirit that we can even have that revelation. Mm. Um, because in Scripture it says like, uh, it, it basically says something to the effect of, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, but the world will not know him. because The world will not see him because they do not know him, mm. but you know him because he's in you and mm. he's with you. And that. so the fact that we know Jesus, the fact that we've accepted means that we have the Holy Spirit. So comforting to know that, isn't it? He's always with us, always within us. D the anointing of the Holy Spirit is basically just... It's the power of the Holy Spirit operating through you to accomplish whatever it is that God wants you to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And the anointing comes in all different ways. Like if you're a singer, you will have the anointing and the gift of singing mm -hmm. and you'll be able to use that singing to glorify God. If you are a good communicator, you will ha be an anointed communicator. You'll receive that anointing and you'll be able to communicate to others in a way that really brings them to Jesus. If you have a podcast, the podcast will be anointed. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so we have we have um, a prayer today, and we, we want to do the salvation call. And I also want to finish it with a prayer to ask the Holy Spirit to come into your lives and into your hearts. Mm. Um, Matthew 28, 19 says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm. We're all disciples of Jesus. If you accept Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior, you're a disciple, we're disciples, and it's our job to go and make more disciples. So, you know, when we finish today, we encourage you to go get baptized and then also encourage other people to get baptized, Yeah. you know? Yeah. And even if you've said this before, I, you know, we love saying the, the prayer over and over again just because we like it. We love resubmitting to God in our mind, our lives to God in our minds, but... um. Father, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. Father, I believe that I am truly saved and born again. I believe that all of my sins have now been fully forgiven and washed clean under the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, I now, by an act of my free will, turn my entire life over to you. I now place my body, my soul, my spirit, and my entire life into your hands. I now ask that you place and enter me into your perfect will for my life. I now ask that you set me up on the perfect plan and destiny that you have set up for my life. Father, I now want to receive the baptism of your Holy Spirit, the release of your Holy Spirit to come up and enter into my soul from my spirit. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I now ask that you allow the Holy Spirit to enter into my soul. Father, from this moment on, by an act of strong faith and belief, I am now going to believe that the Holy Spirit has now entered into my soul, regardless of whether or not I feel anything. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. That was beautiful. I receive it. I, I receive, receive it. Me too. <laughs> I do too. I really do, regardless of what we, we feel or not. Um, the Holy Spirit is is a gift given to us by Jesus, and it's only from the sacrifice that Jesus made that we are allowed this gift. Before there was Jesus, before our true Messiah, we didn't have anything like the Holy Spirit. We could not enter into the presence of God. Um, but because of the Holy Spirit, we are able to access that at any point all day long. All you have to do is ask. And God wants to give us that gift of the Holy Spirit. He wants to give you the fruit of the Spirit, joy, love, peace, hope, um, gentleness, kindness, self-control. He wants you to have all of that. It's accessible and ready for you to receive, but you just have to receive it. You have to make that conscious decision. 
And I don't know how I was living before without the Holy Spirit. I don't know. What a dark, dark. <laughs> scary life I was living. Truly. Man, the Holy Spirit. It's our best friend. It's everything to us. Everything. It's our everything. safety. I, I, it doesn't matter what I'm going through. I know I have the Holy Spirit. And I, I just, it brings me a comfort that nothing has ever brought me yeah, before. I know. I know. I think baptisms, I think both of us getting baptized has really, we thought we knew Jesus before and Mm. it's just like, it's just opened up a whole new world for us. And John 1 says that in Jesus is life and that life is the light of all mankind and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. We were living in darkness for a long time, but we received the light and the Mm -hmm. life. He is life. He is life. He is the light. And he will shine his light into all the dark parts of your soul and illuminate just all of the good things that life has to offer. And that's what it's like being close to Jesus, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we love you guys so much. And I really hope you said this prayer with us. Go out, get baptized, and make disciples of all nations. We love you guys. We love you so much. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace. 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 And may the Holy Spirit inhabit every single part of your soul. May he take care of you. May he love you, Mm. minister to you, protect you, and just speak to you. We love you guys so much. We love you guys so much. God bless you.